What's going on, everybody? We are about to launch the Ghost Dry Brush in seven minutes. It's going to be exciting. So hopefully some people will join in the chat and we'll all experience this together when it goes live. So I got some stuff around me here I might be working on for painting, but uh, just to kill some time, I'll show you that. Uh, we got the Hulk. You'll be able to probably see him at uh, LVO or Adepticon or both. That's for sure one of them, if not both. Uh, we got the Cyclops. You'll see him in the campaign. So that'll be cool. You'll be able to check him out. Pictures of him at work in progress in the campaign. Uh, you're also going to be able to pick up the Cyclops bust in one of the pledge levels in the campaign, and we'll go over some of that together whenever some people join in. But we're about six minutes away from launching the Kickstarter. So let's hang out and uh, maybe get some paint on some models, relax. If you have anything to say, join in the chat, let me know. Got my wet palette here. Hopefully that's, that's what it looks like when you're using a wet palette. How beautiful is that? So much paint, <laughs> so much fun. Here we go. Uh, I'm gonna add a little water to the wet palette here while we kill some time before we launch our Kickstarter. So hopefully everybody's gonna be really excited and happy with this new Kickstarter. I know people are really gonna like the brushes once they get a hold of them, just like everybody else has. So that's always a win. Uh, pro tip, get your little squirt bottle here, put distilled water in it, and you can use it to re-wet your uh, wet palette and use it for your airbrush. So distilled water, it's like a dollar for a gallon. We are five minutes away from launching. I see some people are watching. Uh, if you guys want to talk in the chat, let me know. I'm here just hanging out and... Uh, Hopefully you're excited. We got Oh wow, we got another patron. Wow. Hey, that's exciting. I was just checking out the old Patreon page and I just got a new one. Oh, uh, let's see what's going on. Nate Z. Wow. Thank you so much. Right now we got uh, Thomas Mertens, Caesar Solis, Casey Vernon, and Nate Z are the current patrons. Actually, Casey's uh, on a break right now, but that's okay. He was the very first patron, so big shout out to him. Thanks for getting the ball rolling. What a huge, huge pledge. We're actually only, geez, I think we're only like, let me get, I'm not 100% sure how to use Patreon here. So that, good. 94% before we start doing monthly giveaways. So if somebody just goes on and pledges like uh, $5 a month, you'll all be entered in to do monthly giveaways. I got like Imperial Knights and stuff. I'm going to give away some kits. Uh, a bunch of stuff we'll give away. Probably paintbrushes, busts, uh, models, unopened models. Uh, I think I'm going to give away the box of the Imperial Knight Armagers once we hit 50. If we get closer to maybe like 100, we'll give away a Knight Valiant. It's like a $170 kit. So definitely check out the Patreon, Patreon Redbeard Boss. Got the Ghost Brush. Maybe we can get some shirts made at some point. That could be cool. Uh, here we go. Three minutes until launch. If you guys have ever worked on a uh, Kickstarter or anything before, or just any big project, you can tell it's pretty all-consuming. You'll relate to this. Uh, it definitely takes over all your mental energy trying to get these things going and trying to get them working and doing the best you can and then kicking over stuff by your feet. Uh, so it, it's been a pretty rough last couple of weeks as it you're kind of coming up on the deadline. I was originally going to launch on the 10th which I did not hit, and uh, that was unfortunate. But here we are on the 17th, so that was seven more days of stressing out over this Kickstarter. Uh, 
So hopefully it's a big success. We got all kinds of pledge levels for different um, people that want to do just dry brushes, brushes, people that want models. I got a swamp troll designed by Polymorph Miniatures that looks so awesome. Um, we'll be showing him in the updates. Hey, Dark Initiative. Hey, are you still doing those boxes? Hey, are you talking about the bits boxes? Uh, yes, totally. If you are interested, uh, send me an email at redbeardboss at gmail.com. And uh, let me know like what armies you play or what games or if you're more sci-fi or fantasy. And I can kind of uh, lean the contents towards that. And I still have tons and tons of stuff to go through. So hopefully, awesome. I'll check that out for you. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, the uh, the first guy that did it, I threw in a Vindicator, Vindicator, a tank. The Vindicator tank, Space Marine tank. He said he played Space Marine, so I just added a whole Vindicator tank for him. So hopefully he enjoyed that. I haven't heard back yet, but, uh, you know, so these are good. I'm not trying to, you know, scam anybody for Space Marine shoulder pads or nothing. So uh, just let me uh, Actually, I can try to check the email right now. And we are one minute away from launch. So it looks like. Okay, I see. I'll reply back to you here in a second. But uh, just let me know what uh, what faction or armies or whatever you want to play. Here we are, one minute away from the Ghost Dry Brush Kickstarter launch. We did it. Basically changed my life last year in January when we launched the first one. And here we go. It's 12 o'clock. Ghost dry brushes. Let's launch the second one and see if we can't drum up a good time for everybody. Painting miniatures. This is going to be so awesome. I've read the details, the terms of use, privacy, policy, and Kickstarter rules. Launch now. Boom. Congratulations, your project is live. Yeah. All right. The project's live. Ghost Dry Brush. Uh, I can't do screen share. Happy, yeah, happy ghost year. Oh, man, yay. I got a beer, actually, here to crack open with everybody. Uh, I quit drinking, but uh, it's a cherry vanilla soda here, so that's going to be exciting. So if you got a drink... Cheers to you. Thank you so much for all the support. Oh, that's the good stuff. I'm going to put it over some ice. One thing that's weird about these kind of healthy sodas is they're always clear. So if you're a soda drinker and you're used to seeing colors, <laughs> when you drink them, that's not the case with these. <laughs> awesome. All right. One more time. Cheers for the Ghost Dry Brush launch. That is a pretty darn good soda. Wow. If you like uh, cherry vanilla, check that Check that soda out. Canes made with cane sugar. So I guess it's good for me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We got... Let's see here. We are on the Kickstarter. I guess we need... Oh, that looks beautiful. Need to start sharing it out to all the all the platforms to let everybody know. If you guys are interested at all in backing the Kickstarter, uh, it would mean a lot if you just jump in and throw your pledge in, and then you could back out later before the Kickstarter ends if you decide you don't want them, or drop your pledge down to a dollar if you just want to donate a paintbrush to the Children's Hospital. But uh, I think it helps drum up, uh, I don't know, like raise you through the ranks of the Kickstarter landing page, uh, the more backers and funding you have. So if you're on the fence, I don't feel obligated, but I have no problems with you jumping in and backing it and then, you know, canceling your pledge later. If that's what you have to do, you know, money's tight or whatever. Or maybe you don't need dry brushes. Maybe that's not your thing. But let's go here. Going to try and share this on Facebook. It looks like there's a button for it here. 
and I'm clicking it and nothing's happened. What are the dropper paints you have in the background when it's over? Uh, you talking about these ones? These are, I actually did a video on this. It was uh, the, something on the video is titled something like uh, products you should buy or products I'm excited to use for a miniature painting. And these are the transparent Liquitech acrylic inks. So you can get these on Amazon. Uh, you get burnt umber, burnt sienna, and raw sienna. So kind of a yellow brown, a dark, dark brown, and then a red brown. Uh, they're pretty cool. I use them on my skull. I should probably have grabbed that skull. I'm going to go do that because it's a part of the Kickstarter. Give me one second. Let me grab the skull. And just for good measure, we better grab the skull cup too, this little guy. Me and the skull cup have been through a lot together, so we better put him back on display. And then we got the skull we painted. So uh, I see you were talking about the other ones. But uh, anyway, those transparent inks, just if anybody else is interested, uh, they were used on this through the airbrush and then a lot of dry, basically a dry brushing over black and then transparent inks and then dry brushing again over the whole thing and uh, make a pretty convincing little bone skull here. Uh, these ones over here, we got a lot of Vallejo model color. Uh, some of them are army painter and some of the ones up top are secret weapon washes. So there's a little mix there. Uh, Joey D, Joey D, thank you so much, man. Uh, it's going to be very exciting. seems like the share on Facebook post is not working, so we need to figure out how to let everybody know this is live. Uh, it has 28 days, Dark Initiative, when it's over, so I think it makes it January 14th will be the end of it. So 28 days from now. Hey, we got our first pledge. Hey, how exciting. Man, the first time I did this, it was uh, January last year, 2019. And I used to, I still stay up every night, but I stayed up, you know, till five in the morning every night trying to get it all working together and get everything working, right? And basically just nonstop trying to learn how to do it, how this works, how to contact factories, how to get samples made, how to, you know, it's, it was really, really hard to push, you know, that credit card payment for that big first order back last year. And now we've made four orders, five orders from factories in China, big orders. We're selling them in, around the world. And uh, it's pretty amazing. So it's been really, really exciting. And now here we are adding the ghost brushes. So with the dry brushes, unfortunately, they, they're limited on the stretch goals that the dry brush only get. And that is just because the price, you know, I'm trying to keep the price low for everybody. And when you're trying to figure out, like a lot of other, I guess, companies, I'm assuming they just charge a lot extra for the actual product and then pretend like they're giving you a bunch of extra stuff. Uh, but basically, you're just paying for it up front. Hey, it's Porterhouse. Nice. It's big steak, man. <laughs> How's it going? Hopefully, you're doing well. We're just here drinking our sugar cane soda. Maybe going to paint some miniatures. I don't know. It's I don't know if I my hands might be a little shaky from all the stress release of watching this Kickstarter here. But we might be working on something here. This is the bust from Blackheart Models. I know you can't really see it, but it's really cool. And it seems like a really, I mean, I've had a lot of fun painting. It's my third bust. And I actually do have a pledge level where you can get this guy. Uh, he does increase shipping quite a bit though, because he's heavy, but unfortunately, well, international especially. There's nothing I can do about that. Uh, international shipping is very expensive. So hopefully you guys are interested. If you ever want to try a bust, 
these Blackheart models, Micromania guys, good price, really full of character, big details, especially this guy's got one big eye, so you don't got to worry about googly eyes, you know, looking opposite directions or whatever. You can try your best on just doing one eyeball. It's big enough for room for the iris and the pupil and everything. Now he's got scales, he's got horns, he's got skin. That's going to be awesome. Really, really fun to paint and bust if you haven't done it before. I think you'll really like it. Uh, congrats on that. Okay, yes. So you're making it on the wire. You're mad, man. Yeah, I, uh, if you mean the launch, yeah, it should be a bit. I mean, it's launch now, so everything's going. Uh, the uh, Any current projects or plans for the year? We got, that's from Joey D. We got Space Marines. I got a whole bunch of them all over the place. Uh, this is the Iron Father Pharaohs, a bunch of Primaris Marines in there. I've been playing the Iron Hands a bit. Uh, I want to paint Deep Madness. I backed that Kickstarter, so I want to paint the core set so me and the friends down at the store can play. Uh, I got Hulk and Cyclops here, which are going to be entered in competitions this year, hopefully in one week at uh, LVO, although Hulk is pretty far away from getting anything done. And then, yes, we have tons and tons of Eldar. If behind the skulls now, you can see I got three War Walkers on the desk. They're not primed yet. Just built. Uh, in the airbrush booth here, I got some Dire Avengers I was working on. So I'm going to actually be using the Eldar to start practicing with oil washes using my oil paints. I used to be an oil painter, not like professionally or anything, but that was my dream in life was to be an oil painter. So I own a lot of, a lot of oil paints. So I want to start learning how to do oil washes on my miniatures. I got swooping hawks here, primed, uh, some little, like I like to paint little wizards and things and put them up on eBay. Just a bunch of projects, probably just for myself be uh, board games like Dark Mad or Deep Madness to try to play Space Marines and uh, Eldar just so I have stuff to play with. But if this Kickstarter goes anything like the last one, uh, it, it was so much, so many paintbrushes to ship that most of my time was spent. I thought I was going to ship them all out and have this wonderful, uh, you know, six months of relaxation, drinking, Haynes cane sugar sodas and sleeping in a hammock, but uh, I didn't finish shipping the last one till October, late October, and I wanted to have this one launched. So basically, I just kept working through. So, <laughs> and then you know, sometimes I do commissions. I'm gonna paint a, a Blood Bowl Ogre team for some people uh, for a guy at the game store. So it should be should be pretty cool. Uh, turning War Robbers into dark. Yeah, yeah, I got a. I actually have a big Admech army. Uh, I might add a few units here and there to it over the year. Uh, I've been that new flyer is really cool. I've been a little on the back foot on uh, buying GW stuff after the last price increase. Not that I don't think I'm ever buying it again or anything like that. More of it made me reflect on how many models and kits I actually just have collecting dust. So I'm trying not to buy like all the new Admex stuff. I'll buy a new Codex if it comes out, but uh, without actually uh, be working on it. Like that's why I wanted to do the Eldar because I have, I mean, a pile of, I mean, probably a five foot pile. I'm looking at it across the room. Uh, a five foot pile of unopened Eldar box sets. And then I also have a giant battle foam case filled with stuff. Basically, I bought a bunch of people's Eldar armies, plus added to my own. I, I was playing Eldar in second edition. Uh, and now I want to get back into it. I do love them. I got to actually play them once last Saturday. Uh, I did three Wraith Nights with some Rangers and stuff. And just a random wacky game. But I won. And it was super fun. So, uh, not A lot of people are using more Warwars. Yeah, I don't... Uh, I don't have any interest when I play an army to follow. Like, I don't mind trying to make a good army on occasion for a tournament or whatever. 
usually I just make an army and then I try to win with whatever I made, but I don't necessarily spend too much time strategizing during army creation. Most of the time I just play with some friends. If I play in a tournament, I might, you know, aim that list to get maybe what I feel are the most powerful combos. And uh, yeah, war walkers. I wanted to do like nine of them. I have six, three right here. Uh, so I think I might want to try six war walkers. I want to try three wraith lords. I want to try nine vipers, you know, just different lists. I have so much Eldar. I want to basically just work on it. I'm not interested in doing necessarily the uh, six flyers and three death spinners and three fire prisms or whatever people are running. So, uh, but I am kind of interested this year in possibly playing in more tournaments and potentially going for best painted with the Eldar or an army that I have more often. Most of the time I just don't play in tournaments because I don't really like playing three games in a day. Two is kind of where I'm even sometimes I just like one. So playing three is kind of, I don't know. Sometimes it's kind of mind numbing. Uh, my eBay is DJ Ice Latte. If you just search ghost brush or ghost paintbrush on eBay, you should find it. I should be the only one selling them. <laughs> if not, then I guess we'll have to track down who's stealing my IP. Uh, by the way, it's Joe from Mayo. Also, I love oil washes. It expands the knowledge and can lead to some super great weathering as well. Hey, Joey. Oh, it's uh, Flames of War, Joey. Yeah. No. Right? Flames of War, Joey, not Imperial Outpost employee, Joe. I think it's Flames of War, Joey. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> or I guess technically later today after I wake up. I actually buy secondhand almost exclusively. I managed to get two Predators and two. Yeah, uh, I'm a big fan of, especially if you're starting a new army, uh, really, really big fan of buying an army off somebody and then just buying maybe new or used whatever kits to fill out how you want to play that army. But a lot of times, because the characters and things are so expensive now, at 30, 40 bucks a guy, for a character, if you can buy somebody else's army, they're usually not pricing those characters at that cost. So it'll be like two, three hundred bucks for an army, and then you'll add it up, and all of a sudden you'll have, you know be like a hundred dollars worth of just HQ units, and you know maybe it even comes with a battle foam case or some kind of case. You know you really make out like a bandit, and then you go to the game store and you go, hey, I don't, you know, I don't have a Forge Fiend or a Predator or a Drop Pod, you know, and then you maybe pick that up. Uh, but I spend a lot of well. Previously, I was spending a lot of money on hobby stuff, but I think I was actually on a quest to buy happiness, which I've done videos about, and uh, I try not to do that anymore. So <laughs> basically now I'm just uh, doing, I'm just trying to get rid of some of this backlog. I feel like there's some extra weight on my shoulders, I guess, when you have, you know, thousands of dollars, I guess, worth of unpainted miniatures sitting around and you're like, why did I buy these if I'm not even working on them? Um, the last video I saw you were talking to the hashtag, is that the Sneak Secret training strat workout? Oh, uh, I honestly could not figure out a list that seemed even worth playing or fun to play on uh, the Slanesh, really. Without, like, either I go first and I have a chance at winning, or I go second and I take so many casualties. And then again, on my first turn, I still have no shooting back at them. So uh, they're kind of on hold. I might, well, I'm going to see what Psychic Awakening does for Demons, or possibly a uh, Emperor's Children book in the future, if that's something that might happen. So not a lot of... I was oh, Man, I was really into Slanesh. I was working on them, and... Uh, I don't know. It just kind of drew me towards getting some of these space rings and Eldar. I still have a huge Slanesh army though. When I'm selling off all my extra stuff, like my Thousand Suns and Tyranids and all this other stuff, uh, I'll be keeping the Slanesh also just in case one day I want to get back into Age of Sigmar. Right now, I do not think it's a very good game for me. Yay, Flames of War Army for 50 bucks. Uh, I don't know what the price is of a Flames of War tank, but. All the models actually, you know, models just seem kind of expensive. One thing on the price of models that's pretty interesting is 
I always feel like they hold at least 50% of their value if you're willing to wait and sell them, you know, slowly. So, or around 50%. So if you kind of think you're buying a $60 tank, you could be like, well, if need be, almost for sure you could get $30 back. And then if you paint a nice course, it could go more. It beers in the building. How you doing? He's like, uh, so if you guys don't know Itic Beer 40K, he's like the Necron guy on YouTube. Necrons! <laughs> and uh, he's like, he was a big help for the community, for a lot of people. He's still a big help for me. His group, the Itic Beer uh, Wargamer Collective, or it's drawing a blank now, the Unification Network. Uh, you know, he lets everybody share their videos with each other and people talk shop about YouTube. So he's like, uh, you know, a big help to the community and a big help to me when I, I think it was when I was trying to get either 500 or a thousand subscribers, he got me like uh, two or 300 like that. So it beer. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's been a big help to the channel. And although I don't play Necrons, I, one time I did own a Necron army and was going to be, playing with them a bit but uh i still do watch quite a bit of necron videos just because he makes them so if you play necrons i know all your tricks <laughs> uh it's the legend dude taught me about it's the legend who taught me about kit bashes and conversion oh he did beer yeah he's like uh, a celebrity on youtube for 40k stuff and also good morning in, I think, England, something like that. I understand backlog a lot. I just got a uh, real lot of players. Okay. Yeah, the backlog thing started weighing down on me a lot. I actually listened to some audio books on minimalism. And uh, I'm really interested in a lot of audio content, like podcasts and stuff about people who retire early, like people who retire in their like, 30s or 40s, people who travel full-time people who are just minimalist and live all over the world or whatever uh it's very interesting to me so although i'm not a minimalist of any sort it got me really reevaluating. do i need to have 10 12 15 armies no i don't i think at one point when i was still living at my parents before the kickstarter and i was working for my dad this was after i lost everything in vegas so i moved back to phoenix and then uh, living with my parents, I was buying up everything, everybody's armies. I, I once I had paid off the IRS and Visa, uh, my my bills were basically zero, and every month I had tons of disposable income, basically. And I was this is when I mentioned before I was think I was trying to buy happiness because my life was basically trying to restart. I was re you know getting out of debt and uh, re trying to kickstart kickstart uh, my life, I guess, and. Uh, I think how I, you know, you hear like somebody when they get sad, they eat like a tub of ice cream. I think what I was doing was maybe just buying up way too much Warhammer models. And uh, so it's pretty interesting. I'll get into it a little bit here. But uh, the, I was thinking about anxiety stuff the other day. And when I had the, this was also while I was trying to buy happiness. What happened was I had, all of a sudden out of nowhere started suffering panic attacks and anxiety, which I had never had before. And I became unable to drive in my late twenties. I think it would have been almost 30 maybe. So picture yourself one day unable to even be in a car. That is very frightening. And it's something that you can't really prepare yourself for because you basically drove every day since you were 16 sometimes hundreds of miles a day. And now you can't even pull the car out of a driveway without breaking down in tears. And uh, so I started the eBay store, which I was going to start reselling Warhammer and stuff. And my thought was, if I can't drive or if I'm going to have this anxiety right at the time for the, the rest of my life, I need to figure out a way how to basically earn an income that I can live somewhere and make money without having to go to work. Cause I, in my basically nightmares or dreams, you would picture yourself, uh, 
you know, what if you were at work and you had a panic attack and you can't just leave work? They don't just say, oh, hey, mental health. See you later. Come back in an hour. No, it's not like that. You would just be fired. You would just walk, you'd walk out to your car, drive home or whatever, have a breakdown. And then you would also be fired. So I, that really sparked a, a work for myself mentality. And how do I fix this situation? So I started practicing driving. I'm still practicing. I literally practice a couple times a week on just the freeway, driving on the freeway. That's, this is years and years later, five years later, and I still have to practice that, which is whatever. But it also made me so motivated to not rely on other people's uh, employment, I guess, like working for a restaurant. I used to be a bartender and stuff. I worked in Vegas and I wanted to work for myself. And then also that then snowballed into, well, what if I just save a bunch of money and don't have to work anymore at all? So, you know, full-time travel or whatever. And I'll still do YouTube and sell painted miniatures. But when I say not having to work, I mean literally not having to clock in and out of a job every day. I mean, doing what I want, you know, choosing that day or that moment if I wish to try and make money by painting or YouTubing, or if I choose to take the day off and it's, you know, I don't have to answer to anybody. So let's just say, um, understand the background. Oh, entering the IO painting competition. Yeah, uh, last time I entered the IO painting competition, I just entered models that I had already entered at LVO and other, I played with them at Adepticon and that'll probably be the same this year. And I don't think they got uh, great, inc uh, I don't think they got looked at in the same way as others because some of the judges had already seen them many times on social media and saw I had won awards for them at like Adepticon and LVO and stuff. So I think they were like tired of seeing them. So. Maybe I'll have to come out with like a secret new project to enter in that nobody's seen yet just to kind of, you know, try to blow them away or whatever. Alrighty, I gotta go. Hey, good night, man. I gotta be up sometime before five, I guess. I go down to the game store Friday nights. So that's always fun. Uh, we haven't checked back on the Kickstarter. I'm trying purposely not to just stare into it. So I have it on a different tab. So let's... Yeah, I'm definitely trying to retire in my 30s. I'm 34 right now. Let's go back to the Kickstarter. It is at $111. Yay. Already three backers. That's awesome. So hopefully this will... If, I, if these buttons work so I could share this, I think I could get more eyeballs on it. But for some reason, oh, there we go. Yeah. Cool. I already shared it on Facebook. I should probably, oh, <laughs> 30 armies. Yeah. That, got it. At one point I had. And I'm still living at my parents' house, dealing with all that, and not in debt anymore. I had a gig. When I have armies too, I'm from the old like Warhammer Fantasy days of like your armies are big. So my armies are never like two thousand points or seven hundred fifty points, or they're always like three to eight to twelve thousand points. So I had Stormcast Eternals. Nurgle demons, corn demons, Slanesh demons, Zinch demons. And I mean, all of these are huge. So combined. I had Slaves to Darkness, like Chaos Grand Alliance. I had Skaven, enough to play any of the clans. So let's just do that. So we had Mulder, uh, Eshin, Skyre, Pestilence, whatever they're called. Pestilence. And whatever the, like the storm vermin one is. I had, uh, mortals of Nurgle, mortals of corn, mortals of Zinch, like acolytes and Zangors. I had, um, empire, which was like free people nowadays. Cause I used to have, I used to play empire and dogs of war and old fantasy. 
Uh, and then I had Necrons for a while. I had Orcs, Space Marines, Eldar, Admech. Fifth, was that 15 or 20? I lost count. Two men. <laughs> oh man, Tyranids, Thousand Sons. Uh, Harlequins, Blood Angels. That was a really big army I had. Uh, I think that's all of them. I feel like that's about all the, uh, basically all. Hey, Damon. Good night. Thanks for joining in. And thank you so much for backing the Kickstarter. That's a big help. If any of you can share the Kickstarter on your social media, that always helps. Uh, a big thing is I donate a paintbrush to the children's hospital for every backer. So even if somebody doesn't paint or want the paintbrushes, if they donate a dollar, uh, at least, you know, they'll be going for a good cause because the kids at the children's hospital will get a paintbrush. So hopefully that's something for you. I'd like to do two paintbrushes for every backer this year, but I'll have to figure out how many. I was afraid to say that because I just don't know how many backers I'm going to have and that could cause potential problems on my end, basically, because it's hard to work out the math on that. Uh, oh, Chaos Space Marines. Uh, no, I never had, like, the plain Chaos Space Marines, but I had Thousand Suns. So, oh, I also Imperial Knights, so I had that on. I have an Imperial Knight army. I had that one on to the list. Uh, and I don't have a lot of these anymore. I sold off a lot of them, or I have just little bits and bobs of them. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure, it's funny, Itik Beer, I'm uh, pretty sure in one of his videos or Q's and A's, uh, like literally just has Necrons and he's only collected like, uh, oh no, he has Slanesh too. But uh, I feel like he, he's like, he'll be like, this isn't a rag, a rag on you, Itik Beer, but you'll be like, oh, I don't have a unit of these yet in my Necron army. And it's like, you, you're the Necron guy, you should have five of everything. So that's pretty funny. Is there a link to the Kickstarter? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to even get the darn. It's like the buttons are all frozen or something. Let's see if this works. Can you click that link? Actually, what I need to do too is update the previous. Kickstarter. Bear with me for a second. And what we're going to do is just let everybody on from the previous uh, campaign, let everybody know that the current Ghost Drivers campaign is live at a link. Hopefully that link works. Yeah, I mean, obviously too. I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping this explodes like the last one, because it was really, really amazing having so much, basically support and time to uh, get everything ready for everybody and not having to necessarily worry about the day-to-day uh, -day bills because I've made enough from the Kickstarter that I could focus on it full time. So yes, I am 100% trying to continue doing it full time and we're going to make it work. So there we go. Oh, whoops. And let's Click the link. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I did grab a bunch of stuff to paint while I was doing this, but I might, I'll probably go for about another half an hour and then probably eat dinner, which will be 1 a.m. So that'll be exciting. It's crazy to, I mean, you just can't help but stare into the 
stare into the campaign when you're doing these things. It's hard to turn your brain off, I guess. Um. Oh, Enoch Beer actually has a bunch of armies. I, I didn't know that. I thought you were just working on Slanesh and uh, Necrons, of course. The, uh, the, yeah, in 8th edition, the whole game is uh, stratagems and combos, basically. And I do actually like it. I think 8th edition is a really, really good edition of Warhammer 40K. But uh, I, I cannot jump from army to army. Like, it's pretty frustrating when I was trying to play my Space Marines. Felt like every game I played, I just couldn't even remember a single stratagem. And there was two books worth because I had the Iron Hands Codex and the Space Marine Codex. And you're just trying to like, oh, I thought I read something about plus one to hit, you know, and you're like in the middle of a game trying to just basically trying to pull these stratagems out of your mind because you can't just necessarily sit there and your opponent doesn't want to watch you read through the book for 10 minutes while you try to relearn your army. But I feel like if you play the army a few times, then it starts to become fun again. But yeah, that's how I was with Admech because I just mostly played Admech and I still know them very, very well because uh, I played them so many times. But when I was playing my Thousand Sons, it was hard to remember everything. The Space Marines, it's hard to remember everything. I'm sure with the Eldar, it's going to be hard. They have so many psychic powers and stuff. But I think this year I'm going to focus a lot on the craft world Eldar. And also that new Psychic Awakening book is really, really strong. Or I think it's strong anyway. I don't know. I'm not really uh, super competitive, even though if I even if I play in an event, I'm not really competitive about it. Although it is fun to win best painted. I did win uh, most kill points or something though on one of the OG tournaments we had at our local store. We do uh, they run these things called the OG tournament. They're 50 power level like fun tournaments. And uh, no Forge World, no Lords of War, just 50 power level, have to take a patrol or a battalion. And uh, they're super fun, but there is prize support. So that means people are also there to win and they try to make you know their most hard hitting list possible. So the first one I did, I took a friendly just Space Marine list just to play my guys. I was playing as Death Watch and uh, the second one, after noticing that some people are there to win, and it didn't seem like there was going to be like actual best prizes for record. It seemed like all the prizes beforehand were going to be related to uh, related to um, you know sportsmanship and army composition stuff like that. I don't know, but anyway, when you win most kill points and uh, most wins or best record, you won store credit. So the second. Uh, OG tournament, the 50 power level. I took the Admech. I took all the best hard hitting combos, basically. And my plan was to go first and basically spend all of my command points on stratagem combos and blow my opponent off the board and then clean up whatever was left. And it worked. I, only two models out of three games survived against me. Two models. I tabled two people and one guy had two models left, two HQs that were just basically hiding. So I won store credit, so it was fun. And then the next one I played uh, more friendly, just mixture ad mech list. And I went like one, one and one or something like that, nothing special. But So there's one actually Saturday this week. I'm still debating if I'm gonna be up on time to make it because when you go to bed at like five, six in the morning, it's hard to get up at nine to play 40K. So I'd have to change my, I'll have to go to bed early Friday night if I wanna play, but I might just paint on Saturday. And also I have to run this Kickstarter. So it's a lot of, uh, got a lot of, uh, you know, comments and stuff you got to respond to when you do these things and just all that good stuff. So, hey, I tried looking for the troll on Polymorphine's page. Can't find it. Maybe it's special just for Big Red Kickstarter. Hey, um, I don't have any, like, specific contract with him as far. He's really a great guy, though. Uh, as far as him like being unable to sell it, uh, I actually did work with him to design it. I sent him like artwork and things, uh, and he would send me back like his 
uh, 3D render, and then I would tell him what I wanted to change, and we would go back and forth. And uh, so maybe after the Kickstarter, he might sell it on his own page. But I don't think he sells the voodoo guy, the voodoo daddy, this little guy here from the last Kickstarter. His paintbrush broke, and I had to glue it back on because he fell over. But, you know, I don't think he's available on his page either. But I'm not totally – I don't – I think we keep it exclusive. But I'm not – you know, I wouldn't be mad at him for uh, trying to, you know, make money doing what he does because he's really good and he's been nothing but great for – supporting and working with me on the Kickstarter. So he's a, I actually have a really cool idea that I want to work with him on. Uh, and hopefully he's going to be interested in it. And if possible, it'd be another probably Kickstarter later this year. If he wants to do it. Adios, have a good time at work. Save your money and retire. And then you don't got to go to work no more. <laughs> That's my plan anyway, one day. Fingers crossed, one day. All right. Uh, does the Kickstarter include shipping, and how big is the troll? So the troll – oh, the troll, uh, not the Cyclops. Uh, the troll's in the mail right now. So the I should be getting him really soon. I'll have to check. He might be already at – I ship everything to my parents' house because I live in an apartment now, and – I only got a teeny tiny little mailbox. So I have to get them. And then if you follow on the Kickstarter, there'll be updates for uh, uh, pictures of like work in progress on the troll. So I'll be able to show you that in the updates. And I'll put something there for reference, like a bottle of paint or something. So you can tell exactly how big he is. Um. There's a Supreme Command. There's a five hundred point tournament this weekend. I'm going with the Supreme Command and see what shenanigans they can come up with. Yeah, the honestly, I think the smaller tournaments need to really, really comp uh, armies because, like, in five hundred points, couldn't somebody just come with like Mortarion or something that you know maybe you can't hold objectives, but I think it's probably better to be a little more well rounded. I don't know, 500 points of like assassins or something could be pretty powerful. But also, 500 points seems like a friendly, kind of funzy tournament. So, what uh, army are you bringing for your Supreme Command? Hey, we got our first comment on the Ghost Dry Brush Kickstarter. Let's go check it out. First question. One question, what material are the hair of the brush? Is this project EU friendly? The brushes are nylon. Uh, the fact that this question was just asked first makes me think I forgot to mention that in the campaign, which is sad because I've literally read this campaign over and over every night for weeks trying to make sure it was perfect. And now uh, I maybe forgot to include the material, so. Um, <laughs> that's a bummer, but I'll put it in an update. Uh, I'm not sure what is this project EU friendly means. Worldwide. I ship worldwide. Hey, we're already up to $371. So cool. 11 backers. That's see, that's a big thing. That's already 11. I mean, of course, we got to wait till the final numbers 28 days from now. But uh, that is 11 uh, paintbrushes that would, you know, if this was all we got being donated to the Children's Hospital. So that's super cool. Um, let's see. Chaos Space Marine Dean Prince, Jump Lord, Master Position, Terminators. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. The, uh, I bet the Demon Prince will be really strong in. Uh, that small of a game because he's really strong. Anyway, he's a good all around model, psyker, fighter, everything. Do you run him double claw? You did include it. They just didn't read anything. Oh, <laughs> I'll go back and read it anyway. I'll put it in like an FAQ or an update. Uh, last time I had a picture that was like, it showed like a little arrow. It said nylon, aluminum, and then birch for the handle. Uh, I didn't get that photo quite made yet, but it's planning on being an update. 
I think you can maybe go in and actually update the campaign a little bit. Although I, I'm a little worried about that sometimes. So basically what I'm going to do the rest of the night while I'm eating my leftover pasta, not on stream, of course, you guys don't want to watch that. Uh, probably just start sending out messages to all the previous backers, uh, sharing it on, I already shared it on Facebook, sharing it on my Facebook pages and just trying to drum up support. If anybody is curious or, you know, if you have Twitter, I stopped using my Twitter a long time ago. I've never used it for hobby stuff, but if you could share it on Twitter, that would be awesome. If you have a YouTube channel, make a video about it. That would be so great. Uh, and just hopefully, you know, hopefully we can get a whole bunch of people excited about dry brushing. Now these dry brushes are soft. This one, if you've seen my videos, this is the same one that's been used over and over and over again. And it's still nice and soft. It still returns to the nice point. And not point, but oh, you can see a little, one little stray hair there. I mean, it's holding up beautifully. And I dry brushed, I mean, this entire skull with that little brush, which probably needed a bigger brush for a project this size. But I not only dry brushed this skull with that brush, I did it twice. I dry brushed it from black primer and then put inks on it and then dry brushed it again to hopefully give it, you know, some good kind of bone look and texture. So, and that brush by all means should be destroyed if it was just your normal hobby store brush, but there it is. It's a little stained up, but it's still going strong. We're still going to be able to use it. I might be doing a little dry brush highlight on Hulk here on some of his skin. Uh, we got, you know, just, they work good. I did a, I haven't done the video yet. I've been testing. Sorry. But I've been playing with applying the dry pigments. I'm going to show you how to do dry pigment bases. You can use those dry brushes for that. Perfect for it. Uh, of course, oh, I got all the painted bases over there that we took photos of. And uh, perfect for dry brushing bases, of course. And there's a smaller one, too. It's not any more susceptible to damage or anything. Looks like there's something. Uh, some dust. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not super teeny tiny. But generally, if you were dry brushing, you know, you aren't going to be super, super precise dry brushing like uh, one individual little chain mail link. So, you know, usually you dry brush early on in the painting process. And then you kind of fine tune later with some of your ghost brushes, which is always super fun. Looks like, yeah, we got, so we did the update. Now let's go here on the Kickstarter. I don't know if I can post a link. But I'm going to try. And there we go. We put that in the comments. One thing, um, if you do a Kickstarter, you have, uh, I guess, kind of the ability, you can kind of mass message all your backers. But I did it before, like, hey, I'm selling these on eBay now, like nobody replied. So I have no idea if anybody actually gets those messages or if people check them or whatever. I thought when you send out a thousand messages, uh, some people would have questions or reply or whatever, but nope, nobody did. So I'm going to try it again here and let them all know that this one's live, but uh, we'll see if anybody actually gets the message and replies back. We are... I'm sure the patrons already know, but I'm going to go over here on Patreon and let them know for sure. Uh, if you're not on my Patreon, it's Red Beard Boss. If you want to become a patron, 
Uh, we're only like $3 away from doing giveaways monthly, which is going to be big. It's going to be a good way to get rid of a lot of my unopened kits, model kits. You know, I'm going to give away the Knight Armagers, potentially a Knight Valiant, uh, Bane Blade I got. I got all kinds of stuff. So the uh, if you want to join the Patreon, you know, go ahead on over there. I'm not a huge, I don't have a huge knowledge of the uh, Patreon platform. I like to give away all the uh, basically information, tutorials, videos on YouTube for free. Maybe that'll change in the future with some behind the Patreon uh, wall, I guess. But that'll be in the future. So there we go. Sorry, just adding, trying to get all the, trying to let people know what's going on, basically. That's why we're here doing the live stream. What do we got here? You using one of the new demon weapons? No, X. So I can add an axe of the Forge Master. Every hit on a five plus make a vehicle take even more wounds. Bring it in case Lena Russ fam. Oh, and there's a guy who loves bringing that. Yeah, the if you do the corn, isn't there a corn uh, relic axe that's like a Titan killer? I don't think it's good for against any vehicles. They're all vehicles, but against Titans, it's like crazy, crazy good. I think uh, you would only take the axe, though, if you were corn. I don't know if you're doing a corn demon prince. I, besides that, I would just take the claws. Even the sword just seems out of place. It doesn't seem like its rules are better than the claws and not as good as the axe. But, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me on the sword. Oh, man, is uh, uh, Porterhouse said uh, channel turned into a mukbang channel. Is that where people eat on video? Because I am fascinated with how people do YouTube and earn their livings on YouTube. And uh, I actually watched some ASMR video of this guy eating like uh, chicken nuggets dipped in cheese. And then I looked him up on Social Blade and their high estimate of his income was like on $5 million a year. And I was just like, good Lord, uh, maybe I need to start dipping things in cheese sauce and eating them online because... That sounds like a pretty sweet job. I mean, I don't eat cheese anymore, but uh, maybe I could start again for that kind of income. I don't know how that works, too. I figured it was like a pervert thing with girls, but, uh, you know, girls eating and guys watching. But apparently the video I saw was a guy. And he didn't even talk. So he just crunched on, like, fried food. <laughs> Guess you get some good microphones and a good camera. Maybe I'll do that on like a Red Beard Eats channel or something. I have thought about making a second channel. Well, I have a second channel that I don't upload on, but thought about making a second channel for uh, kind of more the anxiety related content that I put out. I'd still include it if it was kind of directly related to the gaming, but I have a lot to say on the subject and I don't want to necessarily bombard all the people there for war gaming and painting. What I would like to actually do is probably turn my channel much more into painting type videos. There's a camera in that box over there. Hopefully I'll learn how to use it one day. I got the little webcam up here. The uh, Logitech. But, and uh, if you've seen some of my top down painting videos, hopefully they're good enough to get the idea across. But if you've seen other channels painting videos, they're way, way nicer and I'd like to learn how to do that at some point. If you build a master of possession right, he can be T5, strength seven, four attacks with the possession psychic power that makes him have minus four AP on his weapon and vehicles just explode when he kills them. It's pretty BS. Well, he's only got four attacks, so it's not. And strength seven, he's probably wounding at best on fours. I think it's fine. And he's going to die when the vehicles blow up. He's going to be taking mortal wounds. It'll be funny, though. Well, it's late. Maybe you'll get messages in the morning. Oh, uh, yeah. Hopefully, uh, P. 
people will respond. It is worldwide, so I have no idea what time everybody else is. I know Idik Beer was here earlier, and he said he had to go to work. So I guess it's morning in England. Uh, I can take the burden off your own. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the uh, I'm basically just going to probably start giving away on Patreon, doing like a monthly monthly raffle. The patron Patreon account is Red Beard Boss. And I'm literally, let me check it here right now. We are $3 away from unlocking the monthly giveaways. So that will be pretty cool. Looks like we got another comment on the Kickstarter. How do we go back to it? Oh, we're almost fully funded. $791. Wow. Only need $209 to get fully funded on Kickstarter. And then the rest is smooth sailing. So I guess we're not turning off the stream until we hit $1,000. Because, you know. That's what we do, I guess, right? We're already so close. Uh, a lot of times, not a lot of times, but my Kickstarter fun uh, goal, I guess, is so much lower than other people's because I, <laughs> I don't know how to say this. I'm willing to try. I put up my own money, and I'm willing to try and sell the brushes over eBay and through retail stores, uh, even if the Kickstarter didn't work out. But the best price I can give to everybody is through the Kickstarter for, you know, helping support the project. So it's such a big deal. But uh, so that's why it's only a thousand dollars to have it funded. It actually is going to cost a lot more, but that's okay. Because if even the, enough people back and a thousand dollars worth have already been pre-ordered for production, I can get the order made. I got, you know, the local store I hang out at is, just like, I mean, they've sold of the normal like ghost brushes, like the regular rounds. I mean, I want to say they've sold five or 600 of them already in six months. <laughs> like tons. They just put them right at the register in the rack and they're three bucks on retail. And they're uh, flying off the shelves, basically. It's like people buy all those WizKid models and Reaper Bones, and then they grab a paintbrush. Or if you're buying paint, you might as well grab a paintbrush right there at the register. So if you have a retail shop, let them know about the Kickstarter. We have retail pledges. Uh, if you own a retail shop, of course, back it. I'll, you know, I'll send you the, the rack and everything with it. They do sell really well. I've had a lot of stores reorder quite a bit. I think it does probably depend, though, on, you know, how much your store has, like, encouragement for painting or you know if you have people that like a lot of miniature painting in your area uh let's go mukbang mukbang yeah <laughs> i think it would be a fun way to do youtube debbie uh porterhouse have you ever watched uh, matt stoney he's like one of the number he's a he used to be for a while the number one competitive eater briefly uh normally he's number two behind joey chestnut or in the top five or whatever for competitive eating but uh i've been a subscriber to his channel for a long time and he eats for speed and stuff but he eats like giant piles of food so if you want to watch somebody eat something check out matt stoney i'm bringing the new corn demon sword on my jump lord just because of its ballistic skill bs the uh I'm not sure what the new Corn Demon Sword is. It might be from either Psychic Awakening or the new Chaos Basement Codex, which I don't have. What are the shipping costs for this Kickstarter? Oh, it's 9 o'clock and 8 o'clock in Europe and the UK. Um, the shipping costs are, depending on the pledge, um, it's like $15 for the smaller pledges and $25 when the box hits... Uh, I think it's something like nine ounces or something. So some of the larger pledges are quite a bit more for Europe and the rest of the world because there's no way to get around it. 
shipping is very expensive. I spent thousands and thousands of dollars on shipping this last Kickstarter. And this one, I am going to spend thousands and thousands of dollars shipping it as well. So it's crazy. It, I even use uh, Indicia, which is owned by stamps.com. And they have discounted shipping. Like it's cheaper to go through them than it is to go to the post office. But it's still that much. Uh, so the ghost dry brush is only probably $15 shipping. Most of the small pledges are 15 just because the weight of the box is about the same. It's weird when you ship to Europe, there's no like, the scale is like zero to eight ounces is this price. And then like at nine ounces, I think, or 10 or something, it just almost doubles. So I don't know why that is. There was people that mentioned about some kind of shipping fulfillment Europe thing where you ship one big box with everybody's pledge in it. And then that company ships it out locally to all the uh, backers. I honestly don't know how that could possibly work in, I think it doesn't necessarily. All right. So this just my idea here. Oh, EU friendly is the way to cut the EU shipping prices. So my question on that, if you're knowledgeable on the subject, because I'm not 100% filled in, I'm shipping one large box with all the brushes for all the backers to like a warehouse in Europe. And then they're fulfilling it and shipping it out lo through the local mail to all the paid or all the backers. But isn't that company going to also require some sort of payment or percentage, which then I would, it would have to be reflected in the price of the brushes. Like, I don't know how that works exactly, but I almost feel like uh, if you ship to a third party, like I don't use a backer kit program or pledge manager because they take a percent. Like, yeah, you can do little add-ons and stuff, and I don't have a lot of add-ons. But if those companies, you're already losing like 10% to Kickstarter. You're losing a lot of money to shipping, another 30% to taxes at least, you know, plus the cost of actually getting all this stuff made and shipped to me. And then, the, you know, it's crazy. So the uh, I'm just not sure how that works without charging people more up front when I'm then going to have to pay this company to do all this work. And it might seem like it's cheaper shipping, but in reality, you might have paid more for the product. Maybe. I'm not sure. Let's see. EU friendly means that you're using a shipment fulfillment company with Europe to ship to European backers. It means backers in Europe will spend a lot less on shipping, plus less likely to have big import charges when it shows up. It works like this. Okay, but... Okay, the company, though is going to charge money. And then to pay that company, I have to give them money that I earned from the Kickstarter, which I assume is the backers money, which comes from the price of the brushes. I, I don't know, it seems. Yeah, I'll have to look into it. Um... If you have a name of a company or something, I can contact them and look into it. But I'm just not sure. It really depends on what they charge me because the money somebody pays for shipping is being used to ship the product. So if the money they paid, if they paid very little for shipping and then little for the brushes, and then I pay this company to fulfill it, doesn't that mean all the money's gone. I'm not. Let's see. So if you make $10 per set, for instance, and you need to pay the company now in EU, and you gain $7 now, but you have more pledges, so you can make more, and that's a short. Yeah, I, I get that. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I have, If you have a name of a company, I'll look into it. But uh, it just seems not 
I don't know. I feel like what's going to happen if a company is offering you that is they're just charging you more for the actual product and then saying the shipping is less, but maybe not. Bunch of companies and most Kickstarters. Yeah, I'll have to Google it or look into it. Maybe I can find a YouTube video about it. But yeah, I'm not super filled in on that subject. On the plus side, though, the... Uh... Oh, what are we at? 877. Oh, we're almost there. Oh, 900 and... Oh, I dropped that down to 877. It went up to 900 and something and dropped back down. 25 backers already. We're almost there. What do we got? Oh, 11 people on the dry brushes. One person. Last year when we did the swamp or the uh, voodoo guy, the voodoo daddy, uh, for this guy, and we had to limit him to 150 and uh, we sold all of them out. So hopefully the swamp miniature sells out too. Or not sells out. We I was going to say is he was only limited to 150 because the guy who was making the miniatures didn't have as many printers as he does now. Now he has a bunch of printers, uh, polymorph miniatures on Instagram. You can check them out. And uh, I think it's polymorph underscore miniatures. The, <clears throat> so we don't have to limit the uh, pledges on the Swamp Troll. We don't have to limit the pledges on the Cyclops bust. So that's very exciting. So hopefully a bunch of people are going to want those. Those trolls are really cool. And also, if you went all the way to the bottom, there if you basically add $15 to any pledge, the uh, I'll see what your total was. So if you know the normal pledge was $40 and yours was $55, then I would know that you wanted a swamp troll, and I will add it into your pledge. And you can add as many as you want. And, of course, that could affect shipping, actually, dramatically but uh, i don't have any way to deal with that so i'll just eat the cost if you buy a whole bunch of swamp trolls basically I feel like even the product is constantly here. yeah i get i i do a lot of shipping because i do a lot of ebay stuff and uh maybe i'm just too familiar with Shipping is expensive. It just costs a lot of money to do it. Uh, I know, like, yeah, I guess the idea would be if you charge $40 in free shipping, is that a better price than $30 in $10 shipping, right? It's the exact same, but it, does the other one feel better? Maybe that's the case. Uh, honestly, though, I'm live right now on Kickstarter, so I don't think I can adjust any of the shipping. Uh, of course... I could relaunch, uh, depending on how this one goes, once shipping's done, I could launch another one, maybe like the EU-friendly one. I don't know. I could try something like that uh, in the future, but I don't think I can adjust any prices at this point. The Kickstarter is live, and it is about to be fully funded. So hopefully... Oh, we got comments. Glad to be back. And the swamp troll looks like a lot of fun. Hopefully, I can manage enough fun. Can't. Sorry, I gotta respond to some of these comments. Uh, one thing, if you've ever done a Kickstarter or YouTube channel, I feel like you should try to respond to every single comment. Uh, of course, if you had a big YouTube channel, it'd be pretty hard because sometimes you can get a lot of comments. But if people are going to take the time to leave a comment or ask me a question or whatever, I definitely want to take the time to respond. And there we go. So yeah, we got Let's see. We might be fully funded now. Oh, $47 away. $47 away. And we have hit our goal of $1,000 fully funded, which is going to be awesome. Um.
Yeah, the uh, that's pretty exciting. I'm so glad that we actually hit it all the way. I didn't know if anybody would be awake right now. We've actually had quite a few viewers popping in and out here, which has been fun. Uh, some good talk here in the chat. If you're watching, feel free to chat. I didn't get any painting done. Maybe after I eat my leftover pasta, I'll actually just do some painting and maybe put on a movie or something to celebrate uh, success. I actually, uh, so I try to eat really healthy. So this kind of my beer here, my sugar cane soda. And uh, I did buy a box of strawberry special edition Twinkies, which I'm gonna bring to the game store tomorrow and uh, share those with everybody as like, uh, you know, hey, have a piece of cake. Just a Twinkie. The box caught me, I'm a sucker. <laughs> I bought them, but whatever. But don't, don't judge me, I also bought like 25 bananas. So try and eat healthy. Let's see, we got, it looks like it is doing well anyways, I see it. Hey, Porterhouse side, thank you so much for checking it out, man. i never really done live streams before, maybe once or twice, but thank you so much for joining in. Have a good night, and I'm sure I'll see you in all the comments on the videos and stuff in the future. Cheers, sweet dreams. Hopefully we'll be painting together soon. Oh, and... If anybody's going to Las Vegas Open or Adepticon, I'll be at both. So let me know because we can say hi. We can hang out. We can go eat some vegetables. Oh, that's a good soda. All right. We got, I bet we're, all right. I'm like, you can't see what I'm doing here, but I have the tabs open. I'm showing that it's funded from my, oh, hey, Corey, I was just going to say, I bet it's funded now. I'm going to check the tab. But Corey let us know it's funded. Let's go back and check. Let's wait till it updates. Take some minute here. Um, hey. Oh, wow, it jumped all the way up to $1,175. Wow. Hey, cheers again. Hey, thanks, Corey. That is good times. We are already funded. Now we're just into the, uh, what you want to call it, the safe zone or something. The, uh, the, fun, the fun zone. Hopefully we hit 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 70 thousand dollars. Last year, I think we hit 70. So let's do 70 again. Let's do 100. Let's do 100 thousand dollars and give like, I don't know thousand dollars to a school or something that'd be cool this last year i bought art supplies for a classroom for a elementary school i wouldn't mind doing that again maybe more uh oh man i was watching these videos today i was tearing up a bit it was uh i think it's called williams syndrome where it's like an offshoot of I don't know if it's a type of Down syndrome or similar to Down syndrome, uh, but it makes people really, really positive and nice. And they're like super trustworthy. And it's like the most friendly little kids and stuff you ever seen, which obviously can become a problem because of, you know, strangers and stuff. But uh, as they get older, but oh my God, it was so like heartwarming, I guess, that it'd be cool to help out something like that. Uh, oh, also I was watching, there's a channel or something on YouTube or Facebook called Great Big Story and they do like little mini documentaries. And there was a, I think there's two. Um, I can't, what are they called? Like nonprofits or charities. And basically what they do is they run an art program for people with mental disabilities or disabilities, I guess. And they sell their art and that's kind of a way for them to earn an income that you know isn't just a disability check. And I have uh, plans to support either through paintbrushes or money to help out at least one of those this year because I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, if you followed along with me on YouTube for a while, I hold painting as 
like a very, very human nature part of life. I think it's very important to mankind and humanity. And uh, I would love to help uh, more people paint. So whether it be miniatures, like I used to do oil painting and stuff, but I mean, yeah, we're painting little plastic toys basically, but uh, it's fun and everybody loves it. Like it's really a good time. If you don't like it, I mean, you don't like it. Maybe it's not for you, but I think the fact that it just so many people find so much joy in painting and art and I'm just uh, happy to be a part of it really. I think it's pretty amazing. Let's go to Facebook, check our notifications. And then let's go to Patreon, see what we got going on here. Anybody's no comments. And then we, hey, oh, we got the email from Kickstarter. Oh, that's so cool. Here, I'll read it out to you since you can't see it. Ready, set, screen. Your project hit its goal. Congratulations. When you're done celebrating, post an update and thank your backers. They'll be psyched to hear the good news. Meanwhile, there is still time on the clock, so keep at it. So what's next? Check out the survey tool. Consider adding stretch goals. Once the celebration's settled, it's time to get to work. That's awesome. Kickstarter already uh, sent me the congratulations email. They're really pretty great. You lose about 10% or something to them. Not lose, but I mean, it's amazing to have basically worldwide uh, publicity or whatever. People all over the world able to check out your product and they only take 10%. Like if you're familiar with the way art works in an art gallery, if you were an oil painter and you've had your paintings in a gallery in San Francisco or New York City or whatever, uh, they take 50%. The gallery takes half of what you sell your artwork for. Imagine that. You spend your whole life learning a skill, but you neglect to learn the skill of marketing yourself and cutting out the galleries. And then you put your artwork in a gallery and they take half. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, now, assuming maybe your price is more than double because it's in a specific gallery, so maybe it works out in the end, but the fact that they get half has always been a crazy idea for me. Let's see what's going on. See four people, three people in the chat. What are you guys looking to dry brush? Are we getting excited for leftover spaghetti time? Because I know I am. Um, let's see. We got... Uh, we got a, he's asking, comment here, asking, uh, do I have to pay extra customs and taxes? Uh, last, I'm going to just let him know last year's Kickstarter. Maybe a previous backer will see this and let us know if they had to pay. All right, we got comments that we are replying to here. We got the live stream. We'll probably go another 15 minutes and then call it. Uh, how exciting. We got actually from the moment we went live to uh, the moment we got fully funded. We spent that together. 
So hopefully, and then anybody watching in the future, if they watch this whole thing, it's an hour and a half. That's pretty long for a YouTube view. But uh, thank you so much, man. It's pretty cool. So crazy that if you just stare into the internet long enough, you can get uh, <laughs> get things made and make friends and build up, you know, yourself and people around you together. It's like, well, uh, feels like we obviously I didn't make a community or I didn't make the painting community, but uh, it's pretty cool to have a community. Like if you go on Instagram and search ghost brush, there's maybe, you know, not everybody's using the hashtag, but there's people there. You could, I'm sure they'd all love to talk. Has, uh, hashtag Instagram is hashtag ghost brush. Instagram is a good place to talk about art. Uh, love the original set. Can't wait for the drivers. Thank you so much, Shane. Uh, what country are you from, Shane? Or where are you located? Got somebody asking if they had to pay taxes or import custom fees. And if anybody here in the chat is from Europe and you backed the last Kickstarter, can you let me know if you had to pay any kind of custom fee outside of the normal shipping that I charged? And uh, back on the shipping subject too, it's not like the shipping's... The shipping's the shipping. Like <laughs> I had... Oh, Vancouver. Uh, so I don't... Did you have to pay any kind of customs or taxes on it? The... Uh, yeah, when... I think maybe a lot of people change the perception of shipping costs by just adding it to the cost of products and then saying the shipping is free when in reality you're just switching the numbers. But I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look in... We talked about the EU-friendly shipping earlier, so I'm going to have to... Do some research on that. Maybe there's some way we can get around that or uh, something, if not this one, but the future. Hopefully we get some uh, retail stores. That'd be cool. We got a lot of retail stores that actually are... Oh, uh, little numbers going up. Uh, the, sorry, the retail stores that back the project. A lot of them have reordered brushes, sometimes almost, you know, every month. And it's crazy how fast they sell. So if you're a retail store, definitely check out the retail pledge. And that would be... All right, what do we got? Not that I recall, it's hit or miss. Oh, well, I do actually put the value of the box much lower hopefully in everybody's favor like on the customs form so i hope that helps everybody i don't know if uh if it does but you know i'm not like ah this guy bought a hundred dollars worth of stuff you know <laughs> so i do try to do it in the buyer's favor so hopefully that helps uh, we definitely got no painting done in the last hour and a half. I thought maybe I would paint a little bit, but I'm actually surprised because I had a lot of uh, a lot of people in the chat. I thought it was just going to be me all by myself, drinking my soda and painting the Incredible Hulk here. And uh, no, we actually had a good time. It is definitely almost dinner time. I'll probably be going for nine more minutes. That would leave me at 1.30 in the morning. That sounds like dinner time, doesn't it? That's the life of uh, launching a Kickstarter at midnight is you're too stressed out to eat before <laughs> it's launched. Not really. I had lunch at an Apple earlier. So I guess that counts. We got five people. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Five people in the chat. Yeah, the ghost dry brushes are live. Uh, I have every intention to ship them out before October. Hopefully, hopefully we can get that done. I will hire help this time around if it blows up to the size it did last year to guarantee or at least help guarantee that I can get them all shipped sooner. Uh, and it's gonna be it's gonna be good times. Oh, and I think this little troll 
the Swamp Troll, once I get him starting to be painted, he'll have uh, updates and stuff. And we will just be living the dream. <laughs> now, has anybody back the troll yet? Let's see. Hey, one person actually is in the Swamp Troll special. Nobody in the Cyclops special yet. But one person's doing the troll and the Cyclops. So that's awesome. Uh, you guys are really going to like it. Just to show everybody again, this is the Cyclops bust. It's really, really fun to paint. I'm still putting the finishing touches on mine. Yeah, uh, you're going to love this guy. He is so cool. If you've never done a bust before, I think he's a really good one to work on. He only has one eye because he's a Cyclops, so you don't have to worry about, like, cross-eyed big bust. And it's a big eye, so you can really try your skills. Just finished 12 aggressors. Wow. <laughs> yeah, uh, what uh, uh, what chapter? What chapter are you playing? I got six painted flamethrower easy build aggressors, but uh, none of the bolter ones, which are probably better. But yeah, I was planning on the Space Marines. I was planning on getting everything, and I haven't bought any of the new Impulsor tanks. I don't have any Executioners yet. I'm trying to do all Primaris, so just everything as far as the new Primaris stuff. But I'm kind of behind on buying everything. I'm trying not to actually just buy that many kits anymore until I either clear out all my old back stock or get all my stuff painted kind of thing. But I'm working on the Eldar a lot lately and Space Marines. I got the, oh, Salamanders. Oh, you got the flamethrower ones for sure then. Yeah, I got the Iron Father here. Got him in progress, so he's looking pretty cool. I got three Redemptive Dreadnoughts in progress. I got six or nine of these little sniper rifles primed. All kinds of stuff. And then what I've been really excited about lately is the uh, Eldar and wanting to play them. Uh, have you gotten many games in with the new Salamander book? I don't see – there's one guy at the store that's working on them and one guy that uh, was taking a break from them because I guess he was beating up his dad or uncle too much because the new Space Marines are very strong. And uh, I think he, they were playing Space Wolves or something and the Salamanders were beating him down too severely, so he switched back to his Tyranids. Oh, we should let everybody know in the update. We forgot to do that. We got to post an update and let everybody know what the heck is happening here. Funded. Sorry, it's hard to uh, talk and type, talk out loud and then type different words while I'm doing it. The, uh, just trying to, oh, what the heck. Just trying to post an update for the Kickstarter. And now we gotta get a picture. Oh, you were <laughs> that's funny. I never seen anybody running 18 aggressors. What are they about 35 points a guy? Something like that? 25 points a guy? What's the points for an aggressor with two flamethrowers? 30 points? Are you putting them in transports or are they just walking across the table also? So many questions. Nobody's seen 18 aggressors, so that's pretty unique. <laughs> Let's get a photo. We are fully funded. If anybody is new right now, we got fully funded in just under an hour, which is so exciting. And, uh, Uh, 
Oh, sorry. I'm trying to do an update here for everybody. Full unit is 206 man. Always advancing no vehicles. Oh, okay. So not worrying about the double shooting for standing still. Just trying to get them up there, or get them into some cover and defending an objective, I guess. So that's not too bad. Six guys for 210, so you're spending 630 on three units. And then you could still take uh, some other big things or some other big units that draw firepower, and then maybe those guys get their way up. Or make it where if they shoot at those guys, they get punished by whatever's in the back, standing, shooting at them, like repulsors or thunderfire cannons or predators or whatever's going good right now. Trying to find a nice picture to put in my update here. I don't know which photo I want to use, though. We got all kinds of photos here. Anyway, yeah, we're doing... Uh, All right, let's let everybody know. Sorry again, a little bad on the chatting here. Uh, do you, Have you tried the uh, Repulsor Executioners yet or Impulsors at all? I don't have those yet for my, my Space Marines. I might get them someday, but not in any rush right now. And anyway, we're at uploading an image to the update on Kickstarter. If you're just joining us, we launched the Ghost Dry Brush Dry Brushes Kickstarter. We are funded, fully funded. Cheers, everybody. Thank you again. We drank a soda. I mean, we are living a crazy life over here. This is wild. We had soda pop. I'm eating leftover spaghetti here in a little bit. It's past one in the morning. There's no adult supervision around. And we're launching Kickstarters and doing live streams. I mean, this is the year 2020. <laughs> all right, we got this photo uploaded. Sorry, I'm all hopped up on sugar now. All right, thank you. I hope everyone is excited to get to know these new dry brushes. The support. All right. Well, we probably have to check now. Probably getting close to 2,000 maybe. We'll be able to check here in a second. Sixteen sixty-two, looking good. Amazing. I don't know why this is like. I mean, oh, here we go. Seventeen sixty-six. Just awesome. We are making moves. Remember, anybody who backs. Even just a dollar. Oh, have a good night, man. Quick start jumping on the bed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Can't carry grab my son of vehicles. Oh, I think the, uh, well, anyway, have a good night. I was going to say, I think the Repulsor can carry those guys. I think they just take up two spots. Off to bed. Congratulations to that. Look forward to it. Thank you so much for the support, man. It means everything to me. Like, it's changed my life especially if you supported the last one and then this one, it's just been 
incredible. Uh, hopefully we get, you know, some shares. If you have any groups you belong to that you want to share it to, uh, of course we want to hit all those stretch goals. So everybody gets double this, double the paintbrushes or whatever. Well, not double, but you know, free sets basically. So hopefully if uh, you got any fellow painters, share it with them. When I mean, you're at the game store this weekend or whatever. Thank you so much. I mean, it's crazy. I don't know how to, I don't know how many more times I, thank you. Thank you. Should be exciting when 18, 21, oh, we're about to hit 2,000. Uh, 2,000 will be one free additional size two dry brush, which is the larger of the two. So any pledge level, including the smallest one, besides the thank you level, will get an additional brush. Looks like a lot of people are actually 21 backers. So the majority, oh no, exactly half. Half the people have just done the ghost brush, dry brushes only. So uh, one thing you'll notice about my Kickstarter is if you back it, you do end up with a lot of paint brushes. And I did the other one last year and I assume just with the quality of the brushes, you know, maybe people don't get a paint every day. Uh, a lot of these previous backers probably just don't need a ton more paint brushes, but hopefully they enjoy using them and decide to jump in and get a bunch of the original uh, paint brushes. It's kind of funny, the, uh, a lot of my paint brushes, well, basically my whole paint brush collection is just ghost brushes now because it makes sense. I'm selling them, so I'm using them. I got a few beat up old ones and then a couple really teeny tiny, uh, nice Kalinsky Sable ones, but uh, the ghost brushes pretty much handle 99% of everything I do. So, and hopefully with those brushes and with the new dry brushes on these models, we can win some kind of award or prize at the LVO, which is like a week away. So if you're going to LVO, let me know. I'll be there. We can chit chat. Oh, we got to check the comments. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. We're getting shares on Facebook. Where are we at? 1821. The crazy thing uh, with the Kickstarter, too, uh, like you go to bed, basically for the next 28 days, I'm going to be nonstop checking it. Uh, well, probably for the first week, and then I'll slow down a bit, and then the last week, it's, you know, obviously checking to leave comments and stuff, but it's hard not to just keep refreshing the page over and over and over again uh, as the, you know, new backers come in, when people start waking up in the morning or whatever the little number goes and, you know, shoots up or you can just hit refresh and it'll jump to whatever it is. So it's crazy. Like, Oh, it just moved. Oh, somebody just backed something or changed their pledge. So I think somebody changed their pledge a little bit. Maybe did a little swamp troll add on, <laughs> but uh, it's like you'll be sitting there painting or doing something. You're like, let's I'll reenact it for you. Be like, do, 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 do. Oh, let me check the Kickstarter. Oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, hmm, dry brush. Oh, I should probably check it one more time. And it's just like that over and over again. You go to the bathroom, you come out, you check it. You shower, you get out, you check it. You eat something, you check it. You get your phone out, you check it. You're at a red light, you might as well pull it up and check it. So, it, oh man, it's so stressful building up to it. So it's so nice that it's already going and it seems like it's off to a really good start. I mean, we're already funded in less than an hour. And we're about to hit our first stretch goal. So that's crazy. And I think it's going to be hopefully a big success. Like, you know, hopefully with everybody's help, uh, you know, if you could share it to your painting groups or your local stores groups, like we have some local groups like in uh, Phoenix here, which I'll actually share it to here in a minute that, uh, like, you know, if you have like gaming in Texas or Warhammer 40K North Carolina type groups, you know, where not like the big groups where people might kick you out of the group for sharing Kickstarters, but 
if you have like a local friendly group, share it there because I mean, go ahead and read the comments from the first ghost brush Kickstarter. They're basically 99% positive comments. People love them. A lot of people have been really, really enjoying them. And that makes me super happy because I love painting. Like it's basically my thing. Like I love it. I love it the most. Maybe you love it more than me, but maybe I'm equal. I don't know. It's my favorite. All right, let's see. We're going to refresh the page. 1852. Wow, we're so close to 2000. All right, when we hit 2000, unless I got to go to the, I got to go to the bathroom soon, but <laughs> I was going to say when we hit 2000, we'll uh, call it and I'll eat my dinner here at almost two in the morning. And anybody in the chat, any questions or anything you want to talk about? painting related or Warhammer related or whatever, board game related, let me know. Uh, as in, if anybody's on here that's played Deep Madness, uh, I got the Kickstarter for Deep Madness. So I've been painting up, kind of speed painting the little monsters and stuff. That way, when we play, we'll have a fully painted set for everybody at the local game store. Curious, how did you choose the name? Uh, for Redbeard Boss or Ghost or uh, which name? The, the name uh, Sleepwalk Air Brush. Oh, okay, well, I'm going to tell you this one anyway. The name Sleepwalk Airbrush, which was like Sleepwalker Brush, but er is spelled air, so Sleepwalk Air, Sleepwalker Brush. Uh, this, the original idea was going to be an airbrush. I was going to have airbrushes, and I was talking with some companies, and it started to become crazy, probably, you know, shipping and the weight and size of the product and the packaging, everything was getting really crazy. And I know so much more about painting and paint brushes than I do about airbrushing. I do airbrush, I have a booth over here, but I just do it mostly for priming and base coating and stuff. So uh, the ghost I just thought would be a nice unique name that would pop basically. Uh, also, it reminds me of all the little gray plastic miniatures being like little unpainted ghost models, <laughs> you know, like they're not brought to life yet until they're painted. So it's just kind of a fun, fun play on that. If you're like me, you have many, many unpainted miniatures all around you, <laughs> which will definitely be hopefully getting rid of on eBay soon. Not all of them, but yeah, I think uh, I think it turned out to be pretty cool. It's just uh, I kind of came up too with the name and design together. Like I think the all white is just kind of a striking. Uh, I don't know. It was kind of a striking image in my head, basically, that I thought was going to be uh, just look good. You know, people. You know, I wanted them to look good and function. And once I found the uh, white nylon hair that I really liked, uh, I decided to go with the all white handle and I thought the ghost fit with that. I have some possibilities of doing some other stuff though in the future. So, you know, that if you don't like the all white brush, you might want to stay tuned, but that's definitely in the future, right? I can't even think about it right now. <laughs> all right, here we go. What are we at now? 1852. Let's see if it updates. It is going to stay on 1852. All right, I'm going to go into the Arizona groups here and share my link. Yeah, my buddy uh, got a new really expensive camera lens, 
and I think a newer camera. He's got both a newer camera and camera lens. So that's why the photos on this Kickstarter are so good. He did a really, really good job. So hopefully you guys like the photos on the Kickstarter. Yeah, the uh, the goals for 2020 is playing and painting a lot of Eldar, hopefully winning Best Painted at a few tournaments with some armies, uh, and also getting rid of a lot of projects that I haven't got a hold or you know really even started. And learning how to use a lot of the oil washes and oil paints on the miniatures because I'm excited to try that because I think oil paint looks really nice. Hey, man, just jumping in to say good day and tell you back there. Oh, thank you so much, Adam. Appreciate it. Hopefully you love them. I'll show you here. Uh, if you haven't seen the videos, I mean, this brush here has been taken through the ringer. I have been dry brushing with it nonstop, basically. And his little brother here. So after quite a bit of use, you can see some discoloration, of course, because of the pigment. But, I mean, one of the things we did was dry brush this entire skull twice. And this is a big skull for a little brush. Would have been easier with a bigger brush, but it's kind of nice. You can do stippling, basically a lot of this. And uh, it's still holding up, right? I haven't even switched brushes. So... Not to mention all the bases, the models that we primed. If you've seen some of the videos, I'll be doing a lot of hopefully dry brush videos uh, while this campaign is going on. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be just happy to get just the dry brushes this time around if they back the other one. Because as you know, my pledge levels come with a lot of brushes. So depending on how nice you are to them or... How much you paint, you know, they can last quite a while. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I think I've seen you in the comments in the videos. It's hard to remember everybody, but uh, appreciate it so much. It's crazy that uh, you start talking about Warhammer and painting on YouTube and you feel like you have friends all over the world. So pretty cool. Oh, no, yeah, no problem. Are you in Australia? You said good day. If you're in Australia, man, that's crazy with the wildfires. I haven't, you can't even imagine what that must be like. I don't know if you're near that. I know here in Arizona, we don't, we've had a couple, but they're nothing like, you know, California is kind of where the wildfires hit the uh, United States mostly, it seems like. Make sure you stay safe though. Um, We all right, let's go here, check back here. My ghost dry rush Kickstarter is live. All right, just putting up some posts in the local groups here. Just to let people know that the Kickstarter is going. Yeah, uh, do you have... Oh, let me grab one. Do you have any of these ones? Like... Uh, Citadel, what was this one? The small dry brush. Like, look how destroyed that thing is. It's like even a long hair sticking out. It's hard to see, I guess, but it's like these things are, I don't know, I usually use them to stab in to clean out my airbrush. 
they don't actually function as like a dry brush. And then an old one I had here that I used for a dry brush from uh, Michaels or something, Zen, Royal, and Langnickel. I mean, that thing is destroyed. The uh, Let's see if we can... Oh, here we go. I should be able to see it better. You can see how it's all splayed out all crazy. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, the round shape actually works a lot better for what we do. I have quite a few that I've destroyed. Whereas this one, which is not destroyed and has been going very well. So it's very exciting to actually have these available. And of course, they'll be in retail stores and stuff after all the shipping's done. Yeah, the the small one, the, so the GW small one will be smaller than my smallest one, but hopefully mine will cover the majority of what you're doing, and then you can use that one for just the little tiny areas you want to dry brush. Or as like how I paint, I would usually do my dry brushing earlier in the painting process, and then I kind of work. I do a lot of hatch marking and stuff, a lot of hatch mark highlights and stuff, but usually just with the paintbrushes. All right, that was the original one. Now let's go. Whoops. Trying to share my thing in the local groups here. Can't really share them in the big groups on Facebook or they might kick you out of the group, but. Oh, nice. Like uh, ripping up some sponge or something for like uh, weathering and stuff. I used a lot of kind of sponge technique. Remember when the blister packs all had the little sponge in the pack? I don't know if I have one right around here. But uh, yeah, I used to use that a lot for, I actually use it on my Admic a lot for uh, weathering and chipping and stuff. It works really good. Another thing uh, you could do if you're bigger, like ghost brush, like got damaged or whatever, you could cut like the size six or five, just cut the top off and use that, something like that. Oh yeah, Death Guard for sure. You can sponge on a little typhus corrosion. Some Nurgle's rot, you're good to go. <laughs> More backers. Just po typing up a post here for the local Age of Sigmar group. All right. Yeah, I think... Uh, well, I wanted to go to 2000. I still might. I'm trying here. I got to go to the restroom and eat dinner. It's two in the morning. We've been going for two hours. Uh, oh, so you're not. Oh, yeah. That's great. You're not a, right by the fires. I missed that one. Yeah, dry brushing. I feel like I were, I mean, I almost feel like I remember the, maybe not the day, but I used to go to a painting class at the local game store on like a Sunday and uh, 
man, when somebody shows you to like dry brush when you're little or, you know, the first time you're painting, it's the amount of detail and like texture and beauty basically you can achieve in just such a, you know, beginner skill is amazing. And it's so easy for people to start to get excited about miniature painting, I think, with dry brushing. I feel like I remember dry, like my first models, I don't know how long you've been playing, but I feel like back in the day we used to paint basically all metal black and then dry brush it silver with like chain mail, I think the color was called. That's like how you painted metal back then, back when goblin green bases were a thing and then old Warhammer Fantasy, it was like paint it black, dry brush it silver, and it looks like metal. And that actually hasn't been done in a long time. I haven't seen anybody do that where you just dry brush metallic right over black which it works still i still think it looks pretty good yeah so if you've been playing a long time or painting a long time the uh you might remember that back when warhammer fantasy goblin green bases people used to black line black line uh all the models everybody all the little eye guard and warhammer guys look like they had eyeliner on with like <laughs> a big eye. Yeah, I've done it a few times. It worked actually. I think it works. Uh, I don't do it so much for silver because I do like some of the dark washes and stuff. But if you do it with like brass type colors, like brass or bronze type colors, right over black, it always looks good. And you can do like a dark bronze up to a copper dry brush, and it looks so sharp. Super cool. I haven't tried it actually. I should try it on something soon. I don't know if you've tried the uh, these. Uh, Vallejo metal colors. They're super thin. They go through the airbrush, but their coverage is really, really good with a paintbrush, and they really have a nice shine. So I've been using those a lot. So I haven't been doing my traditional style, where I'll do like that, plus a gloss wash of either Noln or Agrax, depending on if I want to look oily or whatever. And then maybe some highlights with a normal silver. Yeah, Necrons would be the perfect army, especially if you need to crank out an army of dry, you know, if you want to dry brush and you want to have a painted army, can't go wrong with Necrons. Another option is making whatever army you play look like they're made of stone, <laughs> like a rock living statue army. Oh, we're at 1904. We need $96. Nope, 1985, it just shot up again, $15. For 2000 for the first stretch goal, and then I'm probably going to sign off, eat dinner. I was going to paint, but I honestly think I might just relax and put on a movie. It feels like your brain is just spiraling out of control leading up to these things, so it's kind of nice that it's up and going, and it's kind of fun. If you go to sleep, which I probably won't go to sleep for quite a few hours, when you go to sleep and then you wake up, you get to check it and see how well it did while you were asleep, so that's very, very fun Uh if you've ever tried to do like a crowdfunding project. Oh, I gotta send it to my friends. And let's see. Sorry, there's so many, you know, with all the social media platforms and stuff, there's so much commenting and posting and sharing and messaging and stuff for these. It's not overwhelming, but uh, hectic, I guess, would be the, the name for it. Yeah, we got, all right, I think we're about to hit 2,000. Oh, we're so close, 1985. 
We're almost there. <laughs> then it's bathroom break time, dinner time, movie time, bedtime. I think that's the plan. And at some point, I need to paint this Hulk before Thursday. Oh, wow. I'm running out of time here. I got, uh, we're going to LVO and Thursday next week. So a couple days. And to be entering some models at the LVO painting competition. And uh, hopefully we do well. And if anybody's going to LVO, let me know. I'll be there. Say hi. I'm the guy with the big, big red beard. All right, who else do we have to send this link to? Trying to send it to all my friends. Now I'll probably do most of this later. Well, good luck, mate. I look forward to trying that. All right, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hopefully you have a good weekend. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot of YouTube videos coming up because I'm going to be trying to keep creating uh, some buzz around the ghost brushes. So if you get a round to the game store, your local game store, let them know or send the link to your local groups. If you have like a local like Brisbane 40K or Brisbane Age of Sigma group that you are a part of, be so happy if you could share it because the more the merrier. Have a good day. And I think we are – hopefully we're about at 2,000. Oh, we – oh, no. <laughs> oh, it went up. Over 2,000, you know, ding, 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 and then it just dropped right back down to 1985. So somebody either pledged and then canceled it or changed their changed their pledge back to a smaller pledge, something. We're almost at 50 backers. That's amazing. We've been alive for two hours almost. You have two hours right now on the dot. So we're getting about 25 backers an hour, 28 days to go. So hopefully that'll be very successful. All righty, here we go. Oh, there we go, $2,016. We did it. First stretch goal hit. That is exciting. Hit the very first stretch goal. Now everybody is going to get a free additional large dry brush to their pledge, except for the thank you pledge, of course. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I got to eat dinner. So everybody have a wonderful night. Hopefully you enjoyed hanging out here, chit-chatting, and I'll talk to you on YouTube, on Facebook, whatever, in the future. Take care. Also, check out the Patreon. We're about to hit the giveaways on the Patreon. So, Redbeard Boss on Patreon. If you want to buy a bits box, redbeardboss at gmail.com. If you want to subscribe and YouTube, like the video, comment, all that, I always try to reply to everybody. So, thank you guys so much. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot of me coming up for the next 28 days. So, talk to you soon.